two of the Wombology tournaments with me, Twitch chat's favorite noob, Cal Leslie, and Twitch chat's favorite semi-intelligent person with I'll long hair. Take it. It's subtle. I was about to say I'll take a semi then, but that probably isn't the widest yep. thing. Yeah. That's not. Let's yeah. well start the day as we mean to go on. Yeah. Uh, we are here for the second and final day. Do you want to say Championship Sunday, shall we? Championship Sunday. We have eight players remaining from our field of 16, and they're going to go all the way through to the final today. So yeah, as I say, we have eight players. Our first game is going to be Kranich versus Sixo. I want to run down for you how these players all got here, but it's an absolutely stacked day. Uh, we had, of course, Kranich would be Eloise to get here, Sixo beating the Jor dude. Later on, we're going to have Ryzen versus Orange. Zalay versus Hoy, and then, well, a match that could be anywhere in the world, Life Coach versus Firebat. And you can see now how they managed to get there. We had some nail-biting series, six three twos out of eight, I think, and no three zeros, which was a, a good advert for last year we're standing. Yep, very much so. I mean, it is... There... It is and it isn't a good advert for Last Hero Standing because there's two main criticisms of Last Hero Standing. There's the fact that there's there's three O blowouts possible with the power deck, and there's also some people argue that it's just a big counter pick fest and you win the first game and then it's counter 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 it ends up three two. Um, whether or not you think that is a bad thing or not is open for dispute because you could say that that will then favour the player who's brought the right deck lineup and who has won the pick ban phase and made intelligent choices there. Um, so 3-2, definitely a mark of at least an exciting 10th series, and uh, that's something that we have had a lot of out of this last Hero Standing format. Yeah, we had some really intense games, particularly at the end of yesterday with Life Coach and Purple, uh, and Hoy and Jab as well, some really good series there. Uh, Strife Crow, Dog, Eloise, Show among the players who failed to advance out of the top 16, uh, out of the 16, to the round of 8. Yeah. And, uh, what an 8-player lineup we have left today. Yeah, it's crazy. You could even, you know, you could reverse this completely. It shows the the power of the 16 that we had. You could, you know, if the, if these eight players that we have in um, in the top eight were, were the ones that were knocked out and we have the other eight players going through, you're looking at a top eight of, you know, like Show, Strife Crow, Dog, Eloise, Purple, Ecop, except you're like, wow, this is still a really stacked top eight. So, you know, this is just the way the tournament was going to go. It's full of killers from top to bottom. So really stacked top eight, but I personally am particularly excited about this first game that we have, Kranich versus Sixo. Absolutely. I think the, the theme for this first game is consistency. These are two players who are really known for those levels of consistency, but we talked about it yesterday. Kranich, one of the only player to make it to back-to-back -to -back world championships in Hearthstone's entire history so far, yeah. which is, you know, there's not there, there are very few more impressive achievements in the game than that. Yeah, I mean, this is a game where long-term consistency is the biggest testament you can have as a player. Like, sure, winning one huge tournament and taking home a massive trophy and a, and a massive check is impressive. Um, but you know, it's Hearthstone. You've just built a, you've just beat a field of one group of players on one day. You know, to be consistent over a 12-month or more period and come to back-to-back -back BlizzCons through a long qualifying process in both of them just shows an insane level of consistency and just a really high average win rate for Kranich, which is kind of what Hearthstone is all about, just trying to push that percentage win rate as high as you can get. Absolutely. Well, you want to talk about consistency. Sixo was another great example of that. We talked yesterday about the run of tournament wins that he went on towards the end of last year, winning yeah. something like four online tournaments in a row, as well as picking up the Esports Arena land tournament, his first land victory. Uh, he's a, he actually has one of the most decorated Hearthstone records in terms of winning tournaments of, uh, of just about anyone. Yeah, it's and it's kind of a quiet record as well. So like you say, he's kind of the king of these sorts of, you know, premier, you know, Twitch-based kind of tournaments where it's a 16-man invitational, a really stacked bracket. But like you said, for a while he was kind of lacking his, his big land wins. We managed to pick one of those up recently. But yeah, for the most part, he has just quietly behind the scenes gone on, you know, racking up the prize money, racking up the tournament wins. And he's definitely proven himself to be one of the most consistent players, particularly in this sort of format. Absolutely. They both came away with a 3-2 victory. Kranich beating Eloise yesterday and 6-0 beating the Jordan. We do have the lineups for you and the bans, so we can get into our first game in short order. I know this messing around. We're going to go straight through all these games. We have a lot of games to bring you today. We're going to bring you, of course, the round of four, the round of eight, sorry, uh, and then our round of four and our final. We'll also have the final of the $1,000 side event, which our UK colleagues, uh, Falcone, Equiblad, and Lorinda have been casting today and yesterday. Uh, we're going to bring you the final of that as well. Very stacked tournament there. 
like circle back and uh, talk about a little bit of that as we get closer to that final and finding out who it is we're going to see. Uh, so lots going on here in the Wombology tournament. But the lineups for these players, we have Kranich and Sixo. Kranich with the Druid, Hunter and Rogue and his Warlock band. And Sixo has the Rogue, Warlock, Druid and the Warrior band. Indeed. And Warrior, we I believe we saw yesterday from Sixo was the patron. Don't think it was banned out in the game that we saw yesterday. Yeah, we did see uh, it. Did we see Kranich's Warlock yesterday? Do we know what archetype that was? I'm I trying to remember. I, remember. I don't know if we did. I think... Mm, that's a good question. Um, but anyway, we'll point, point being here, obviously, this is the... Um, the added layer that gets added once you get information about the players that you're playing in tournament. Obviously, the, the, the deck archetypes have been revealed by being played on stream here, especially since so many series went 3-2. There are very, very few concealed decks in the tournament at this point. If you get a 3-0 blowout in Last Hero Standing with one deck, you get to conceal a lot of information about your lineup. But since all these players were pushed to a 3-2, that information is out there now for their opponents to be able to more intelligently target bands of things that they know are specific archetypes. They know whether they're dealing with Zoo or, or Reno Lock. They know whether they're dealing with Patron Warrior or Control Warrior, etc. All this kind of stuff. Um, so there's, a, there's an added layer of information that, that Sixo and Kranich and all the rest of the players from here on out can go with here to try and make sure they get the, the best matchups possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, not to mind game it a little bit too much, but we talked yesterday about Six O's lineup being somewhat predictable, just because you know, you know, exactly which decks he favors. He favors Patron, Oil Rogue, and Zoo. They're three of his very favorite decks. Uh, and you would assume it'll be a mid range Druid, though, could be the first aggro Druid. Uh, he has been known to play that as well, but more likely the mid range Druid. Um, and those are all decks that you would predict from the Six O, which I guess perhaps gives him a little bit of a disadvantage in the first round, but then maybe mitigates the potential disadvantage in future rounds? Uh, why? Because you haven't given away information that they didn't have already. Oh, so yeah, okay. So sure, but at the best it puts you back on a level playing game, yeah. right? Like, if people are able to correctly predict your lineup in the first place, then you don't reveal any extra information, but you're still just back where you started in terms of your decks being out there, so... Sure, I can, I can buy into that argument a little bit, but doubt it's going to be a huge factor. But I think we are getting ready to go. Uh, looking at our player feed here, Kranich and Sixo look ready. Kranich just appears to be uh, very elegantly sipping on a cup of coffee <laughs> right now. Yeah, I think Rogue has sort of been the story of the tournament so far in some ways, in terms of deck choices. Because we talked about Rogue being a little bit out of favour, maybe in the same spot as, as kind of Hunter. Yeah. We've seen two Hunters, but we've actually seen quite a lot of Rogues. I think we'll see... Uh, we'll see five rogues in our top eight today wow that is, that is a lot of rogue and again rogue is one of those picks we talked about yesterday that you know players can favor even though it's a little bit out of favor in terms of a ladder deck the rogue specialists can definitely bring it to a tournament where they can aim it at specific things ban out one of the problematic matchups and just rely on their skill with the deck to carry them through um, but getting into game one here we do have the face hunter from Kranich up against uh, Sixo's Druid, and he has more or less the dream here, Callum. Living Roots on turn one to fight for the board, followed by an innovate Keeper of the Grove on turn two. Yeah, we talked yesterday about how Keeper of the Grove, when you're playing uh, against aggro with this deck, Keeper of the Grove almost becomes a more useful card because not only is the effect super powerful, but it's a really well shaped body, I think is what was the way you put it <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Uh, to deal with, with threats. I mean, you can deal with things like uh, like Wolf Riders, things like Leper Gnomes, and still, you can pretty much guarantee a two for one. Yep, uh, especially when factoring in the immediacy of the two damage onto the board, but no threat comes down on turn two from Kranich, so he is going to dodge that Innovate Keeper of the Grove, but there is still the Coin Keeper of the Grove to come yeah. out next turn, which you can then follow up with the Innovate Emperor, since he's been able to hold on to his Innovate here. Yeah, this is something we talked about yesterday as well, that there is... Uh, a really good position for the druid when you have the innervate and the coin because it means you you can choose to accelerate by two mana or if it's not convenient you can just wait and do it the next turn you don't yeah. have to float a mana with the innervate yeah so it, just having that the different levels of ramp means you have the the full suite of options in your head i love this from sixo by the way just immediately going aggressive doesn't recognize leok as a big enough threat here knows that the only potential punish is unleash the hounds and even then it's not particularly bad um, so Kill Command comes down on the Emperor, which is another downside of leaving the Beast alive. But still, the, the Hunter has essentially had to pass a turn here to deal with Emperor. And uh, Sixo has got a pretty nice discount on, on decent utility cards in his hand. He now has those two Keepers for even cheaper. Uh, plus the ability to curve out with Drake this turn, plus a cheaper Doctor Boom to put pressure on later. So. 
Yeah, playing that Thoris in there, as you say, discounting the Azure Drake and getting that for turn four when he didn't have a four drop in hand. Uh, as it turns out, he did top deck the Pilot Shredder this turn, so he would have been okay. But it did help his curve, and you know that Keeper of the Grove has come down to can come down whenever he wants it to. All right, Callum. I'm... We had the discussion yesterday about my dislike for the term Hybrid Hunter. And that you're gonna, I, I would like to just use the phrase Face Hunter for any aggressive hunter that's playing charge minions in it. But this is a Hound Master. Um, so there is a uh, very real possibility that this uh, does deserve the title of hybrid. He has that Argent Horse Rider in there and the Houndmaster. Might be leading even more towards uh, the mid-range side and just having those Horse Riders in there as an extra utility. That's entirely possible. I'm just thinking what we saw in the... What did we see in the early game? Do we see the... Do we see Leopard Gnomes? I'm not sure. Uh, it was it was only our first yeah, game yesterday, so it was a very long time ago at this point. Yeah. Um, the uh, the second Hunter deck that we saw from Hoy is more fresh in my mind, which m was more of an outright face build. But the combination of Argent Horse Rider and Houndmaster and Freezing Trap is a little bit uncommon in Hunter decks. So uh, interesting little twist on the build that Cranch has got here. But the Freezing Trap is definitely the trap that you want against Druid in particular. Yeah, absolutely. It's, oh, there's the MC Tech for Cranch. We saw a little bit of that yesterday. We saw uh, that from uh, Eloise, six, right? Uh, MC Tech for 6 -0. Oh, Sorry, yeah, 6 -0. We saw, Yeah, we saw that in the game against Kranich from Eloise uh, earlier on yesterday. And we saw some pretty crazy MC Tech things happening. Did, yeah. Um, but looks like High Main is going to come down here. It's a little bit awkward playing it on turn 7 because you're responding to a Doctor Boom, you're floating in mana. It doesn't feel that great. But at the end of the day, it is still a Savannah High Main. Yeah. It is still high main, and you know you can't really make a decent play here to lock out the freezing trap. There is also that keep that keeper of the grove on the board that can be frozen here and then replayed. So that's a little bit awkward, but the the tempo loss from a six mana keeper of the grove is pretty severe. So you're usually not too worried about that as the hunter player. Um, but in this situation, Sixo's early aggression and his strong early early draw has put him in a pretty reasonable position in this game. Yeah, in the hand of Kranich with those spells that he can't really make a great amount of use of at this point. The Houndmaster, which we you know we talked yesterday, putting on the Savannah High Main, not always a really great option because it, it exposes it to big game hunters, so not the highest value Houndmaster target unless it's going to give you really good tempo on the board. As we can see, he's just going to clear up this High Main here. Yep, second keeper in hand, has been in the hand since the opening mulligan, finally gets some great use here, taking out that Savannah High main, and he's in a very secure position on the board. He's already seen one Unleash the Hounds used, so he probably feels like that Doctor Boom is going to get some good value. Uh, but Kranich just decides to go face here. He's going to play out the Lepanome, which will take the Druid down to 12. Uh, uses the Quick Shot to take care of the Doctor Boom, and he now has 5 damage in his hand, Seven plus the 2 from the Lepanome is 7. Kill Command is 10 right now, so he's a little bit short, but there's some possible top decks that can get him out of this. Yeah, it's certainly the Hunter not out of this yet, especially when the Druid is below 15 health. I think 6 so going to go ahead and heal here. Definitely the smart play. You, you might think you are a little bit safe. You're not exactly, you know, immediately going to die, I don't think, from what you can see on board. But healing just to keep yourself safe, I think, is uh, a smart play from six. So not being too greedy, considering as well the card advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the the kill command on the pilot shredder there was just Kranich taking his doomsayer out in that position. I think he recognised that the game was was a goner there. But uh, in terms of um, polarising opposites in that situation, Millhouse Mana Storm and the doomsayer that he was looking for are about as far apart as we could have got. You always have to play to your doomsayer out. Don't. Uh... Don't concede. I once, I once was casting a Chinese tournament where a player didn't take the uh, the pilot shredder doomsayer out, mm -hmm. and uh, we were criticizing it. And, they, and on those Chinese tournaments, they often have uh, analyst tables, not desks, right. of three players sitting around a table reviewing plays. And uh, obviously, we couldn't understand what they were saying, but they showed that clip, and they all went, "Oh no, 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 no!" <laughs> so you could tell that the Chinese broadcast team had the same thought that we did. Nice. Well, Kranich interestingly doesn't like his rogue into the druid is picking his own druid here interesting um opinions on the rogue versus druid matchup are definitely a little bit split um people it, it swings from in opinion anywhere from 55 percent druid to 55 percent rogue depending on who you talk to so kranich obviously feels like he has either a superior druid deck for the mirror match or that the 50 50 of the the mirror match coin flip is his best chance in this situation what can you be playing in your druid deck to make it better in the mirror match? 
Uh, it's, it's, it's things that you're not playing usually, you know, things like Harrison Jones not being in your deck works in your favor in the mirror match. Um, but also, you know, Ancient of War can be a huge thing in the matchup. Um, but generally, the, it's, it's just down to the, the quicker deck that can get aggressive on the board early. Um, but Ancient of War is one of those few cards that can really swing the game back in your favor late if your opponent doesn't have the Keeper of the Grove to silence it. But generally, it's the, it's the kind of the, the tech cards that you haven't put in that make a Druid right. consistent in the mirror. Yeah, you just give yourself the better chance of drawing more consistently and curving better. Yes. By taking out clunky stuff like MC Tech and Harrison Jones that you might not want to play on curve. Right. All right, let's see. Okay, no wild growth to start with. So no one's won yet. <laughs> yeah, imagine it will be a full mulligan here from both players. Uh, Sixo may consider keeping the wrath. It's a, it's a target for Darnassus Aspirant most of the time. Can also interact with the Shredder. But if you know your opponent isn't running the Aspirant list, then it's a card that pretty much always goes back. But Innovate Shredder with a, with an Ancient of Law for some backup in hand is not bad. Ancient of Law is a little bit slow to have in your opening hand, but it's such a key card in the matchup just to make sure that you stay ahead on resources. And the 5-5 five five body is actually a very difficult thing for a uh, druid to be able to deal with. Oh, double Innervate. So we could do a turn two Ancient of Lore. Could. That's definitely an option. And the, the hand of... Uh, the hand of six... So the, the hand of... Six, there's Kranich, sorry. The, with the double swipe. Yeah, Sixo has the double Pretty innovate. Rough. Sixo has the double innovate. Kranich has the double swipe right now. So, uh, in terms the of the switching, it, switching perspectives when it's a mirror match is kind of confusing. It's a little bit awkward, yeah. But uh, I think that's being done so we get to uh, see the secrets of the top player more often in this situation. So. Well, not in this situation. No. But say the no, previous situation where there was a hunter involved, we got to see the secrets when it switched down to their perspective. So. Double MC Tech in Sixo's Druid. That's, uh, I mean, that's a lot of commitment to that tech choice. Normally, if you're going to see that, I think it's more common to see just the one. Yeah, this is a popular list that started out in the in the Asian meta, and I know um, That's Admirable had a lot of success with this, replacing Shades, most likely, uh, with mind control tech. Um, just because the, the meta is so heavily Zoo and Secret Paladin focused, that um, mind control tech is just a better card most of the time because you're under so much pressure against those decks that it's rare that you get to play out shade and let it grow to bigger than 3-3 anyway so mind control tech is just an immediate 3-3 in the worst case plus it has the chance of just randomly winning you the game against one of those decks well Sixo just goes all face in that last turn because if he does maintain this did somehow manage to maintain this board he would have lethal Yep. So uh, he's gonna help him. See some trading. Yeah, natural Ooh, mistake. Yeah. It's um so it's debatable, right? You can get Cobalt Geomancer or Blood Mage Thanos in terms of spell power, but you can also get Law Walker Cho, which would punish you for using the spell right. afterwards. Um so it is debatable, but yes, statistically there's more spell power than things that punish you for casting spells. So. Right, yeah. That's uh that's an awkward one. There's also potential Sorcerer's Apprentice, right? So you could get Mana Discount yes. as well. So yeah, there's sure. there's three cards that are a benefit potentially if you're playing a spell versus one that's not. Mm -hmm. And Kranich looking at a defensive force of nature here. Not even a very clean or effective one. No. Although he is... That makes it a little bit more effective since he gets to leave zero power on the board, but... Leaving a flame tongue totem around with the uh, threat of some some combo coming in the near future is going to be a little bit scary. And he's going to choose to respect the flame tongue totem even more than the three three. Yeah, I was going to say that flame tongue totem could cause him some problems in the later game, even if it's just a force of nature to trade or a uh, combo itself. Yeah, six hill gets the discount on the combo, so combo is available for next turn. There's an ancient of lore, so Kranich can heal, but then he can't clear the board. I think Sixo is going to pick up a fairly quick Druid Mirror win here. Not yeah. quite as quick as the one we saw uh, from Life Coach in Purple last night. Right, but even if his board was cleared here, he has 18 damage from hand for 7 mana right now. <laughs> yeah, he, do yeah he, doesn't even, he doesn't even need those Living Roots. He has enough from combo, but yes, yeah. he also has two completely free Living Roots. <laughs> it just does it all backwards. Savage Raw Force of Nature Living Roots. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> What a guy Sixo is. Uh, you know, some people hate on Sixo. I'm a big fan of Sixo. <laughs> I think this is excellent. This is truly wonderful. I mean, I, w I watched, um, after we got off the cast yesterday, I watched a fighting game tournament that's happening now. And there is a player um, 
known as Filipino Champ in fighting games, who yesterday, in two different situations, once when winning a game, uh, threw his headset down at his arcade stick, breaking both of them, and then grabbed the, grabbed the guy that he beat and shook him back and forth. And then on a separate occasion, he played a first of 15 set against a guy called Kane Blue River and spent the entire time, every single time he won a game, he took his headset off and started berating the guy next to him. So when people talk about BM in Hearthstone, I think you're all being a little bit precious about well, the two emotes. Yeah, I mean, I remember when K Bride did the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin entrance at Evo as well. You know, we don't get that in Hearthstone. Uh, well, that wasn't Evo. No, what was that? It was final round, I believe. Okay. Or oh, CEO. No, CEO. CEO. Yes, yeah, so CEO. That's why I was confused because it's yeah. another. Yeah. Yes. It's, it was CEO. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome. Uh, yeah. For, for the fighting game community, they some of them they do they get pretty excited. I think. It'd be yeah. Fair to say. Basically, basically, what I'm saying is six O would fit right in. It's, yeah. This is where we're going with this. It's fair, yeah. to, it's fair to say as well. These two players do know each other quite well. Yes. Uh, they kind of run in the same circles. I think it's fair to say so. You know, it's not. Uh, I think it's more friendly BMing than anything else. Yeah. Usually, I think they're they're in the same practice group. Um, and when um, Sixo travels to European tournaments, he spends a lot of time hanging out with the Dignitas guys. Um, you know, Green Sheet, Blackout, Kranich, etc. So um, they're definitely on good terms. This is kind of friendly banter more than it is actual vicious BM. But still, um, the BM in Hearthstone is tame, guys. Okay, you don't. That was a pretty good one. Though. You don't know. That was pretty good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, a 7 out of 10, I think. Well, yeah, the, the Living Roots on the tree, yeah. was, uh, that was pretty good. So Kranich does actually have to pick this rogue now, which... I mean, Sixo's going to feel pretty good. Having seen Kranich pick a mirror, so knowing that Kranich doesn't favor his rogue into Sixo's druid, and then right. forcing him to make that pick anyway... The only, the only other thing I can, can consider is maybe Kranich wanted to win the druid mirror, because um, Last Hero Standing is all about getting more than one wins. What, more than one win with your decks. So say he picked the rogue and managed to beat the druid. Um, it, he may have just been more scared of an immediate counter from 6-0 and felt like the druid was a better chance of picking up two wins from that point. But um, yeah, as you said, 6-0 has uh, dealt with what he thought was, what Kranich thought was his best answer at the time and now is uh, just going to have to deal with druid things here. And he has a... Uh, <laughs> He has a knowing smile on his face right now as he casts the Wild Growth, is able to follow it up with the Shredder on the following turn, and then straight into Emperor Thorasan after that if he wants it. I think as well there may be a consideration from Kranich that knowing that he only has the potential one deck left if he loses that match, he prefers uh, a Druid Mirror to a potential Rogue Mirror. Mm -hmm. Maybe just... And, and the Rogue decks tend to be more different than the Druid decks as well, so if he's playing a... A version of the rogue, as we say, we see Sludge Belchers, Edward Van Cleef, the City Deckhand. Okay, I I love this, by the way, from from Kranich. He he saw the wild growth on the previous turn from Sixo, so he's expecting Shredder. Yeah. So he plays out this South Sea Deckhand here, knowing that the turn he wants to make on the next turn is Deadly Poison Edwin Van Cleef, and that will allow him to chop down the Shredder. The two one has a good chance of trading for the remains. And he has a 4-4 on board with the Edwin against nothing. 6-0 from his side recognizes that situation and chooses to go with the Keeper of the Grove instead of the Pilot of Treasure. So that was actually just a really high level exchange back and forth on both sides. Yeah, another 2-4. We talked about this earlier. Sometimes that stat line can be very useful. And, and this is one of the rare cases where you'd rather have the 2-4 than a Shredder on board. Yeah. I mean, it, it can't, because it was specifically Van Cleef that was aimed to be um, Kranich's follow-up, then he does, Sixo does get a little bit punished for using the, uh, the the Keeper of the Grove, but Sixo was expecting, based on that play, that the follow-up was, you know, Deadly Poison SI7 or Deadly Poison Farseer, for example, in which case the play he would have made was would have been stronger. And goes for the Thorison rather than clearing up the Edwin with, uh, with Living Roots or any other combination of cards. I, he does seem to definitely favor the early Thoris, and I, I can't say I blame him. Right. It always works when you can get a Thoris on as many cards as possible and as early as possible. And you can see from his hand here, it does allow him to go into Ancient of Lore next turn. Yep. He could do something with Azure Drake, Hero Power, and Living Roots if he wants to do some board clear as well. Uh, you know, that Living Roots getting the spell power makes it pretty powerful. So yeah, just increases the amount of utility in Sixo's hand here, and that's really what he's looking for. Also, just based on the state of the board here, a, a possible turn you'd expect from the Rogue would be, say, Backstab and the Poison Charge into the Emperor, followed by the 4-4 hitting the 2-4. 
So then on this following turn, you have six mana uh, Ancient of Law, and then you have the zero mana Living Roots to clear up the remains of that 4-4 Van Cleef that would have two health. But he now has the flexibility of dealing with this Drake as well, with the Azure Drake into Wrath. Um, so 6 -0 playing this very well, and as you said, he is favouring being aggressive here as opposed to answering his opponent's threats preemptively. He understands what Druid is about, which is just getting your stuff on the board and making sure you're the guy asking the questions each turn. You don't want to be the Druid player that's just answering your opponent's stuff. Yep. Uh, 6-0 choosing to, to conserve the Living Roots there, because he did have the option to Wrath for 2 and draw a card and use the Living Roots as well. Yeah. Uh, the Living Roots does give him more reach later on, so I guess he... Uh, interesting, he favoured si effectively cycling... Uh, he, using the Wrath rather than cycling the Living Roots. He, yeah, he's valuing having a Living Roots in his hand over a random other card in his deck, basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can understand that because he, did, he does have the spell power in play. He has plenty of cycle in his hand already with the double Ancient of Law, and that Living Roots does cost zero mana. When a card goes down from one mana to zero with Emperor, that's one of the most powerful discounts that you can get. You know, it's, it's zero mana cards in Hearthstone are notoriously broken, so yeah. um, discounting any card to zero is always a huge advantage. That's why Target Bunny is such a huge card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, no, you're right, especially when you're playing a deck like Druid, having just the ability to do three extra damage or two extra damage with for zero mana to add yep. to your combo mm -hmm. makes you makes just life so much more difficult for your opponent. Blade Flurry pickups, interesting with the Thanos in hand. Yeah, gets the job done here, takes out both of these minions. He has the SI to follow it up as well to potentially snipe down the Shredder drop. Hey, Whirling Zappo, one of the few times you're not too sad to see that card come out. Just plays it up with the second SI, but the, the cards, the hand size of 6 0 versus the hand size of Greenwich. A little bit unfortunate here, so just going to clear up this board here quite, quite nicely with the swipe and the uh, Keeper of the Grove. Yep. I mean, your opponent only has one card in hand. Anytime you can clear their board, you're feeling pretty confident about that. Right. He does also have Druid of the Claw plus double Savage War next yeah. term in terms of burst. So just keeping the board clear. He doesn't really need to push too much extra damage through because he has a big old pile of burst sat in his hand. So uh, this Sludge Belcher, I believe, is going to stall proceedings for one more turn. Yeah, he doesn't have quite enough here to push through the Sludge Belcher. So Ancient of Lore to dig, try and pick up some additional answers. Mind Control Tech not going to be too helpful. Force of Nature is a good card, though. Yeah, he would only have eight damage to go through after the Sludge Belcher because he'd have to use the Keeper and Face to clear it, and then he would only have the Druid of the Claw. So, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play the Ancient Lore, as you say, and then innovate out the Low Feb to lock out, I think, just about everything that Kranich is going to be able to do here. This could be. I don't want to jinx it, Sato, but it looks like we might be on our way. I was going to say, I to don't our think. I don't of the think you can possibly find any way with the commentator's curse. You can try as hard as you want. I don't think you'd manage to jinx that game. That was well and truly over. Sixo gives that knowing smile again. He knows that three zero druid things have just happened, but. Yeah, um, a refreshing change from from yesterday. I mean, I, I loved some of the three two series. They were tense and um, you know very very close and back and forth series. But the the three zero blowout here from six zero definitely uh, helps out our schedulers a little bit at least. It does, and and when you're playing a a second day of a tournament like this where you know you're going to have to play multiple games, you don't necessarily want to fatigue yourself in the first couple of rounds with uh, you know ninety minute three two series. If you can yeah. get that game over quickly. And then you focus on your preparation for the, the semi-finals. But I have to say, Kranich, you know, was an opponent we were looking at, someone we were looking at as a very potent threat in this round of A coming out of our very first game. And Sixo dispatching with him so quickly, plus Sixo's pedigree in this kind of tournament. Yeah. You gotta think Sixo has just put a, a statement out there right now with that 3-0 that he's someone to be taken very seriously in this tournament. Right. We had a discussion just before we came on where you asked me, you know, who do you like out of this top eight? And my response was the winner of 6-0 and Kranich will probably go on to win the tournament. Um, so I was respecting Kranich as a huge threat. I thought the winner who, who came out of this would, would be my favorite. But 6-0 uh, making a statement here, absolutely annihilating Kranich. 3-0 with that Druid. So I think he goes to top of the list of favorites to take this thing down right now. And just while we're boasting about our, our off-camera predictions, I did say yesterday, before we even started, that I thought Sixer would make the final at yeah. the very least. Mm -hmm. uh, just because he is so good at these online tournaments and yeah. these single elimination uh, rounds here against just about anyone. But 
As I say, Six Zero is advancing to the semi-finals. Our first player to make it in the money, at least five hundred dollars secured by Six Zero. It's got to feel good as well at this stage. You know, you're one game away from the money to lose at that point is pretty heartbreaking. So to to guarantee some kind of return for your work here, that's going to be pretty good. But we know from Six Zero, he's a a very driven, very motivated player, and he's going to want to go on and. Uh, Prove once again why he, th he thinks he's one of the best players in the world. And he's going to face the winner of our next game, Ryzen versus Orange. Yep, so, I mean, it's it's going to be a tough game for him either way. Both of these guys are, are quality players, but he's put himself in the driving seat here. He's, he's got his job done, and as you said, not too much mental energy expended. He gets to chill out now, and whatever his routine is between these games, he gets to partake in it. It's um, probably laddering on all three servers at once. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's more Hearthstone involved. Although I've been, I've seen him tweeting up a whole lot about Overwatch recently, and not a whole Over, lot about Hearthstone. Overwatch and anime. That's yeah. his, uh, his favorite pastimes. So maybe he's just gonna chill for a bit, watch the games, scout everyone out else, uh, else out a little bit. But he is well and truly in the driver's seat here, and we are gonna progress soon to see who will face him between my teammate Ryzen and uh, one of your favorite players, I believe, Orange. Yeah, good friend of mine. So yeah, that's going to be a very interesting match for us as well as everyone watching at home. We're going to go to a quick break in just a second before we bring you that match. But remember, this is the Wombology tournament brought to you by Womble.gg, where you can play money matches against your friends and the pros in all manner of esports game and by ScreenShoe. ScreenShoe.com, a fun way to screenshot your games and share them on social media and make all kinds of cool pictures to send to your friends, show off your game game achievements, show off crazy things that have happened to you. It's a great way to do it. So check out screenshoot.com as well. We're going to go to a quick break now, I think, and then we'll be back with Ryzen versus Orange, our second quarterfinal of the day.